Hello, in this video we're going to look at finding and graphing the reaction functions from a Carnot problem. So we have a two-firm oligopoly that's characterized by our Carnot competition. Here is the inverse market demand where Q subscript, subscript 1 is the output of firm 1, Q subscript 2 is the output of firm 2. Uh, we have different cost structures between the firms. The marginal cost for firm 1 is constant at $4. The marginal cost for firm two is constant at eight dollars. We'll start with firm one. We'll find firm one's total revenue. Total revenue is price times quantity. In this case, it's going to be price times the output of firm one. So for P, we are going to substitute in this equation up here. And that price equation will be multiplied then through by the output of firm one to get something like this. Next, we'll get marginal revenue by taking the partial derivative of firm one's total revenue function. So taking the partial derivative, we get 21 minus 2 times the output of firm one minus the output of firm two. The next step is setting firm one's marginal revenue equal to its marginal cost, where firm one's marginal cost is constant at $4. We're going to simplify this by solving for Q subscript one. Dividing everything through by 2 leaves us with firm 1's reaction function. And we will graph this in a moment. For firm 2, uh, it's basically the same setup. Firm 2's total revenue is price times its output. The price equation is unchanged. Uh, but this time we're going to multiply what's in parentheses by Q subscript 2. So doing that and then taking the partial derivative of firm 2's total revenue with respect to its output, we get this expression. Like before, we'll set firm 2's marginal revenue equal to its marginal cost. Its marginal cost, as you recall, was constant at $8. So simplifying and then dividing through by 2, we get firm 2's reaction function. If you wanted to find the Cournot Nash equilibrium, uh, I did the math over here on the right. And what you can simply do is take firm 2's reaction function and plug that into firm 1's reaction function. So firm 1's reaction function is given by 17 divided by 2 minus 1 half times the output of firm 2. So what's the output of firm 2? I'm just plugging that in over here and then simplifying it we see that firm 1 will produce 7 units of output. Plugging that 7 into firm 2's reaction function, firm 2 will produce 3 units of output. Okay, on to the graphs. So here once again is each firm's reaction function and I have them down here. The, the steeper reaction function is firm 1's, the flatter reaction function is firm 2's, so let's go ahead and graph firm 1's reaction function. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to try to find these vertical intercepts and horizontal intercepts. Where does the reaction function touch the vertical axis? Where does it touch the horizontal axis? So to do that, the first thing we'll do is we'll plug in uh, 0 for firm 2's output. So if Q subscript 2 is 0, We'll go ahead and solve this, and, and we see that firm 1 would produce 17 divided by 2, or 8.5 units. So if Q2, or Q subscript 2 is 0, Q subscript 1 is 17 divided by 2, or 8.5, and that's this horizontal intercept down here. So if Q subscript 2 is 0, Q subscript 1 is 8.5. To get this vertical intercept, what we'll do is set Q subscript 1 equal to 0 and then solve for Q subscript 2. So setting the left hand side equal to 0 and solving for Q subscript 2, we get a value of 17. And that's where this vertical intercept is coming from. All right, we'll basically do the same thing for firm 2's reaction function. We'll start by setting the output of firm 1 equal to 0. So if firm 1's output is 0, Q subscript 2 is 13 divided by 2, which is 6.5. So we found the point right here, 6.5, or 13 divided by 2. Likewise, if we're going to get the horizontal intercept, 
we're going to set the left hand side equal to zero so setting q subscript 2 equal to zero and solving for q subscript 1 we get 13 so that's where the 13 is coming from you'll notice where these two reaction functions intersect we found our Carno nash equilibrium where firm 1 produces 7 units of output and firm 2 produces 3 units of output okay i hope you found this video helpful